Well, howdy, 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 everybody. Teresa here with... Brad. And the critters. See, I'm not putting him last now. And you just almost didn't know what to do, did you? No. <laughs> I was expecting Charlie to answer. Charlie, do you answer? Charlie, do you answer me? Oh, him come over here and say, hi, Mommy. Oh, you can let me move this for you. Are you okay, Charlie? Oh, my goodness. You see the squisher, squisher of tails. I can't show you guys him because I have you all propped up here with the ring light. I know you're so excited. Anyway, it is March 30th, 2020. It is Monday at 12.25 p.m. We've been up for about a couple hours. Let me do the, the um, weather real fast. Hang on just a second. Okay. Sorry, I had to answer my daughter. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know. <laughs> you guys know how it is. You that have children, the children come first. You get all excited when they text you or anything. You're like, oh! <gasps> Because, you know, they're busy with ch with their own children and with work and stuff. So you're like, oh, you know. Or it's, like, it's like, I love it when she goes, I love you, Mom. I'm like, that's just the best phrase in the whole world. I love you, Mom. And it's like, oh. Anyway, today it is 83 degrees out. Feels like 84. The high will be 85. Today the low will be 66. Partially cloudy. 20% uh, chance of rain. Humidity is at 43%. Wind is 5 miles per hour from the southeast. Sunrise was at 7.28 a.m. Sunset was at 7.55 p.m. or will be. And tomorrow, is supposed to be 80% chance of rain tomorrow, babe. Cool. Yep. So we won't be hanging clothes out. Oh, uh, no. And uh, pretty much the same except it will get down to 54. But you know I love the rain and Brad loves the rain and our daughter loves the rain and stuff. It's basically because here is warm rain. I've never experienced warm rain before. Brad has on his trip back to Hawaii, but I never have. And it's like, it's warm rain, and you're like, oh, you know. <laughs> so enjoy that. Um, I'm up out of the shower this morning. Brad's going to shower after we take lunch. I'm having sauerkraut and hot dogs today, people. And I, but I have mine a little differently. And I have mine over mashed potatoes. And then I like to put mustard on the whole thing. Yeah. It's a German thing. It's just something I grew up with. Brad hates sauerkraut because when he was a kid, he, he uh, ate some spoiled sauerkraut. And that ever... Forever stayed in his mind, you know. And some people just don't like how it you know. But I happen to love it. So let's go play back though, beginning with Saturday. Saturday we get up, we're fiddle farting around like we do. We're just not in a big hurry for anything. Come on, Nick. We're sitting here just kind of talking. And I think I believe we were watching. It was either we were watching. The rerun of Live PD, or we were watching about the uh, CV. And also, knock, knock, knock on the door. Well, you know, we don't happen to stay ready for people. I didn't have my teeth in. I didn't have my girls holstered. You know, but I didn't have a shirt on. But anyway, knock the door. Somebody's at the door. So, Brad answers the door, and it's a police. It's the sheriff. And then we're trying to figure out, I'm trying to figure out what we could have possibly have done wrong that the sheriff would ever come knocking at our door. And what it was, was in this little trailer park, in the furthest corner from us, the trailer was on fire. And I felt bad. These people had just moved in. They seemed to be a couple about our age and... Their trailer was on fire. They lost everything. It was a complete loss, um, in, in, including their cat, which felt really sad for them. Red Cross put them up in a motel for a couple nights. 
uh, one of our neighbors went and bought him a couple outfits. Um, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of go through some of our stuff, you know. But the thing is, is with the six foot feet distancing, you know, you have to be very careful. Um, but uh, what happened was the guy behind him who owns this, um, this house, he was burning um, a, a garbage pile, flash pile, which is common around here. They do it all the time. And there's no restriction on it. But the wind was up that day, about 50 miles per hour, which around here is is up. And you need a grabber, hun? No. Okay. And um, the wind came up and took it and caught their trailer on fire. Kind of scary because, you know, at one point in time, I had thought maybe, you know, about maybe we should move in there and... Um, you know, it was occupied so fast, and, and we want to be out of this trailer park anyway. But, yeah, very sad. So, you know, but at least no humans were injured. But I feel bad they lost their cat and all their stuff. Um, I don't know what Brad Heidi's doing. I'm, I'm trying to ignore him. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be uh... No, well, we all I hear is a dig, dig, dig. What are you doing, sweetie? Uh, pulling out... Uh... I was pulling out the cord to my um, uh, tablet because I was going to take that in back and plug it in back there so I can charge it back there. Okay. <laughs> what was I going to say? Oh, no. no, what was I going to say? What you guys can't see is he threw down the cord to his computer, and then he's like, you know, because he knows that he inevitably, Bradley, Bradley, Francis, Bradley, Francis, can you quit, please, because you're really distracting me? You get over here, you sit in the chair, and you start digging everywhere. It's like he's mining for gold. <laughs> Feel bad for these people. No, but honey, it's really distracting. I know. I'm sorry. And I'm trying not look at your butt while you, your butt's up in the air while you're digging for stuff. Like distract me. So anyway, that's what happened Saturday. Oh, cause I oh I skipped over a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, the reason the sheriff was knocking on doors, he was evacuating all of the trailer park, and um, and it, it didn't even take us five minutes. Okay, I ran back. Put my teeth in my mouth, you know, put a bra on. I grab my bag of yarn. But, you know, any disaster, I have to go and have my bag of yarn. I do. Ask Brad. There can be a tornado coming. And what do I have to have? Yarn. And if there's, a, and if there's a fire coming, what do I have to have? Yarn. Yeah. Charlie. And Charlie, yeah. And, and Nixie, I felt bad we had to leave our cat. And I really felt bad there wasn't time enough because it wasn't even five minutes and they were knocking on the door again telling us to hurry up. You know, because, well, and I did grab, like, my wallet. It has my identification in it. Um, we didn't even grab any medications or anything, which, you know, on hindsight, now we're going to kind of design a, a better plan, right, sweetie? You know, we'll use that bag. I'll take some yarn out of it, and we'll put like our medications that we need immediately Good in there. Good idea. Because that was really, yeah, not yeah. advising. Bring your yarn, Teresa, but not any of your medications, okay? And Brad too. So anyway, so yeah, they evacuated us. With they told us we had to go up to um, a nearby park, uh, which we did with everybody else, and then. Uh, it wasn't very long that they let us come back, and yeah, over half of that, over half that trailer is just you can just see the the burnt bearings of timber, yeah. you know. Diet Coke, not officially Diet Coke, but anyway, um, so then Sunday. We decide, we're trying not to go out, but, you know, as you need essential things, you have to go out. Brad does like me to go with him, um, 
number one, because, you know, he had difficulty walking and stuff. So, um, it would be very difficult for him to, um, I don't know, pick, I don't know. We just like, he just likes me going with him, even before he was disabled. Just like me going with him. And then it gives me a little bit of exercise. And we're very careful. We wear masks, we wear gloves, um, and we need to pick up a few things. I was looking for eggs, didn't find. I'm not in a crisis mode on that yet. We did find one poor pack of toilet paper, and this is what happened. I was going down, <laughs> now y'all got to hear, Brad's excited as I am. He was going down the clearance aisle, because you know me. Any clearance aisle, there will be in any store, I will find, right, Brad? Yes, you will. And I if you can, don't find it, right? I do. We can sniff those suckers out like, you know, a bloodhound can, can sniff out a court. You know, we just sniff, 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 and we find. And we're going down this dollar on uh, 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 Dollar General there, a dollar aisle. I like go down it because sometimes you find really great things. Uh, you know, so we're going down it, and I look up above, and what do I see? What do my wandering <laughs> eyes so see? One four-pack of TP somebody had put way up high. I bet you anything, it was either somebody putting it up for somebody else to come in the store and get, or it was an employee. I think it was an employee. It was just the one four-pack. I couldn't have reached it. Brad got his cane. Brad's a good hooker anymore, people. He got that cane, and he can hook with the best of them. I mean, it's kind of scary how he can use that cane on so many different things, you know. But he he hooked that. We got it down, and I felt like I should I should punt it because it was such you know I just kind of squeezed it. I'm like, oh, that's creepy. One four pack of toilet. Paper and then put it in a cart, and then I was half afraid somebody was going to probably take it. Going through there. Going through there. You know, if we didn't stay in there too much longer after that. No. Because I was afraid somebody was going to take my one four pack of toilet paper. Oh, I was so happy. I still am. Even though it's like really, really crappy toilet paper. But hey, at this point in time, we're taking anything we can get, right? Right. So, yeah, we got toilet paper, and we got some ravioli. Brad wanted some Chef Boyardi ravioli. I got the last four cans they had there. Um, and, oh, I got a can of, of the, I like the light salt Pringles. And um, I think that was about it, wasn't it, really? I think so. Oh, I got a bag of flour, and I got another can of uh, cooking spray. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, and you might if I interject here. Are you going to interject me I am again? I don't know if I'm ready for your interjecting me. That sounds really <laughs> that, bad. Yes, it did. Um, one of the things I love to do is I love to bake. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, um, which is probably not a good thing, you know, if we're trying to watch what we eat, but, you know. I love making I love making cinnamon rolls and, and Brad doesn't use substitute sugar when he bakes. Now no. I do, but he does. No, because he says it never tastes as good. But you seem to like the stuff I make with sugar substitute. Well, it's different when you make it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a lot different when you make it. Anyway, but, you uh, love to bake. That's why I was really glad to see you got uh, another bag of flour. Well, I asked you even when I had it in the cart if we needed another bag, and you said yeah. Mm -hmm. We had picked up one not too long ago, and yeah. but you know the minute that yeah we go through the flour, we well, like we both like to bake. And you know, and then another cool thing, and another, and, you know, is uh, when we get closer to family, I can bake and we can give it to them. So you know, I get to enjoy the doing the baking, and then they've got to eat it. That's what I'm looking forward to, too, because yeah. sometimes I, I hesitate on, like, making cookies and stuff. I'm a cookie maker now. Yeah. I love to make me some cookies, right? I don't even necessarily will eat them, but I like to make them. Well, I don't usually make too many because then somebody might eat too many of them, which is not really good because for his A1C. 
Yeah. Not naming any names. No, I... I and I can't blame them because my cookies are just so fabulous that I do make a good cookie. I do Ken make good cookies, don't I? Honey? Yes, remember Kenny? We had... I guess he was your cousin-in-law. Yeah, and he was, yeah. he was a policeman. And he... We lived below Brad's aunt for a while. And I was making Christmas cookies. And normally I would start like into September, 1st of October making Christmas cookies and freezing them because I gave out so many. And I was making cookies and he came downstairs to say hi or something. And I had a bunch of cookies laid out and he asked if he could have some. And I said, yeah, go ahead. And, and so he took a few and he ran back upstairs because that's where his wife was. Um, and uh, he, then pretty soon he ran back downstairs and he asked for a few more Go ahead, and he ran back upstairs. Then he came back and he goes, I'm really sorry, but these are so good. <laughs> I don't know how many trips he made, he but made that was funny. Yeah. But yeah, I used to be known, known all over as a cookie lady. Mm -hmm. because, you know, I like to drop me some cookies of all different sorts. Yeah. You know, but, um, and I, I would like to do that again. This this is another deviation. Oh, from no, please don't deviate again. Could you really F me up when you deviate? How far are we deviating? Back to the 90s. Oh, Lord. Um, remember when the girls went to Willard? Yes. And they had the, uh, they were doing the bake sales, the cupcake sales. And, the, you know, they were selling these cupcakes for like 50 cents each. And there were several mothers that would go with, go to the store and buy... The really fancy... Yeah, you know. that were a buck each, mm -hmm. which didn't make any sense. But um, Teresa made a bunch of cupcakes, and she poured them in an ice cream cone. The flat bottom ice yeah. cream cone. And, you know, she decorated them up. And it was amazing because those cookies sold out you so mean fast. Yeah, that too. <laughs> those were fun, and they were so easy. You ever want to do it, um, you know, like... Rebecca, if you're listening and stuff, you should buy the flat bottom um, ice cream cones. Thank you, ice cream cones. And then you fill up, you know, to about the line, you know, a little bit, a little bit below the top of the, the cupcake, uh, the ice cream cone. And then you, you bake them. And I used to uh, put them in a, a muffin tin so they wouldn't fall over. You have to be kind of careful putting them in. But what happens is it rises above the, that line of that um, ice cream cone to about that. And then you frost that and decorate it. And kids love it. And what how I did it, well, I ran across the, the, the um, article on how to do it, some magazine. And I happen to have a ton of uh, these flat bottom ice cream cones because my grandparents had shut down their bowling alley. And in their cafe and stuff was a great big thing of ice cream cones. So, you know, why waste? And, yeah, those were popular, and, and, and kids loved them because they could eat it all. And, you know, and it was easy to hold on to, and it was something different. So, you know, it And was it was cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was really I, It was a lot of fun. I'm always really proud of you, but that was one of those. Uh, oh, thank you. That was one of those moments that yep. you just. So anyway, I don't even know where we were going with any of this now. Sorry. We were back on the TP, and then we were all the flour, and you like to bake, and I like to bake, all of that. So, um, that was Sunday, basically. Sunday's my TV watching night. I love that 90 Day Fiance. I don't even make any bones about it now. You know, that's my, my trash TV, and I like it, and, uh, you know, Brad notes that I'm going to sit and watch that. That's the night that we do a fend for yourself night. Which works out great for us. And that's the night I do all the pills, you know, for the week. And, and normally we have some laundry and stuff to fold. We didn't this week because our schedule is kind of changing because now Brad's home all the time. So, of course, the schedule will change. You know, laundry is a little bit easier because we can take turns. That's nice. Um, you know, uh... And, like, we sat down last night after the shows were over and made out a schedule for the week. And then uh, Brad made out a menu. He does most of the cooking. You know, I cook on uh, Wednesday night. 
you know, if he wants me to cook another night, or if he doesn't really feel like it and he's in a lot of pain, then we'll just rearrange stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I did yesterday, too. I did pull a bunch of weeds, because yeah, landlord, even though it's in our contract, he's supposed to be doing the yard work. And he, last year, fought tooth and nail, stated everybody could just pay somebody else to do the yard work. He did mow one time. One time he mowed. Well, this year started again the same, you know, and Le and his employee said, well, you can come and get the mower and the gas can. And I said, he can't mow. My husband cannot mow. You know, he is disabled and he cannot mow. And all they said was, oh. So what I'm doing is I'm doing what I did last year in part is I'm going out and I'm pulling weeds out along the trailer and stuff and kind of making a path. Um, so that dogs will still be able to uh, go out there. And the dogs have pretty much kept the inner part of the yard mowed down, <laughs> you know. Trampled. And, yeah, and so that's what I'm doing. So it's really hard on me, though. So what I do is I take my chair and I just keep moving it along. And I'll pull all around and in front and stuff, throw that middle of the yard to die, and then I'll just go on down. So I got part of it done. I got maybe if I if I do this this whole section, I have probably one sixth done. You know, of, of around the whole trail. Yeah. So but I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can. You're doing really um, well. You know, so uh that's what we got done. And like I said today we're doing the front of the house. We're doing the, the front room in the uh kitchen and doing laundry. And that's about it. But I've got to call in a bunch of scripts. And anything else? That's all you can think of. I think no. you got it all, no. sweetie. How is everybody doing there? You guys doing? Do you guys hear that That now we're supposed to stay do the stay-at-home thing until the end of April? Which I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm really not surprised. I'm hoping everybody isn't going nuts yet. Yeah. We're doing okay. I mean, I get a little stir stir crazy, but you know, if we need to go out and get essentials, even that little car ride is good for me. So, getting outside, guys. If you are able to get outside, you have a yard. <clears throat> even just sitting outside right by your front door makes a big difference. It de really does. At least to me, it does. Um, just the fresh air, listening to the birds, um, watching the dogs be silly. Uh, it it's it's good, you know, just breathing in some fresh air. So uh, that's what we do, uh, you know. I don't see any harm with that. We're mm -hmm. not sharing that common area with anybody else. So, you know, that's good for us. But just hang in there. Do some hobbies. Watch some mm -hmm. comedy. Watch some, some funny movies. Mm -hmm. Don't just sit there and keep listening to all the doom and gloom about the CV because it will make you very depressed. Yep. We watch it for a few minutes in the morning, a few minutes at night. We get the gif of everything going on. We did get the stay-at-home uh, alert on our phone because we're diabetics. So, you know, only go out for essential and stuff, and that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it's going to be a long haul. I knew... I know the president was hoping that everybody could be uh, going to Easter services, and I thought, ah, oh, that's way too soon. I don't think that'll happen, and, and uh, way too soon. Right, honey? Mm -hmm. So, um, stay safe out there. Well, but it'll all work out. It'll all work out, you know. I think we're, we're having a huge influx of new cases because the testing is a lot faster now. And more people are getting tested. You know, all we can do is just hang in there and hope for the best, you know. And stay at home because it does save lives. And, yep. uh, you know, for all of you essential workers, uh, I want to thank you. Yep. All of the postmen, UPS, FedEx, uh, like yesterday, dealing with the sheriff, the um, EMTs. That they weren't needed, but they were there on the scene. Our fire 
our fire department is right behind us. And, and so was the EMT, the ambulance and stuff. I mean, you know, they couldn't be any closer. <clears throat> they literally had to just go around the block. And so we had a lot of them. <laughs> you know, and all the firemen, all of the hospital workers, anybody in the medical field, anybody in any of the, the restaurants or drive throughs and stuff that, you know, I know so many were laid off and, and, um, but those of you that are still there and are man in those drive throughs and, and take out orders, you know, we all want to thank you guys. You know, we do. Because I know it's not easy right now. Yeah. You know. It is. There's not. one other thing. And another thing. That I want to talk about real fast. Is there is a big rumor going around that Hobby Lobby refusing to close its doors. It's going against mandated, you know, rules or, or um, mandated policy. Laws. Yeah. That is not the case. If you go on to snoops.com, it has the article there. The states that they can be open, they are. The states that they cannot be open in, they have closed. You know, somebody got a, an article wrote an article stating a broadband very, I guess they didn't do any investigative work or anything on this, that every Hobby Lobby store. No, it's not. It's not. If you're in a state that allows some, the stores to still be open, it'll still be open. If you're in a state that has mandated mandatory closures of all stores, they'll be closed. But you can still order online, of course. But I just wanted to put that out there. I hate when somebody starts to decide to broad blast a business that they don't really have the facts on. You know, because you're not only hurting yourself, you're hurting everybody else, especially the business owner. You know? So, uh, I just want to put that out there. I'm not affiliated with Hobby Lobby in any way, shape, or form. So, but I just wanted to put, put you know, that out there about that room. So, any, anything else, sweetie? Nope, you done good. All righty, well, we're going to get off here so we can eat lunch and then get our house work done. So, oh boy. oh, boy. Anyway, love you guys. I do cherish your friendship so very much. And I think you guys are awesome. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Say bye, Brad. Bye, Brad. Bye, guys.